Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So it is dark and dreary out today, a perfect time to stay indoors and take apart a number of my copper bearing items that I've acquired over time from scrapping. I do get a number of questions from beginner scrappers asking me where I get the bulk of my copper and definitely it is in the form of number two copper from a lot of electronics and appliances, uh, motors, uh, yokes, different things from magnetrons, transformers. So gonna talk about some of the items, where I get it from. I don't have time to take apart everything here, but I will take apart some things. I do have a bucket started here, and I will have a full description or video from each of the teardowns of all the things I mentioned. Uh, the links will be in my description, so if you're interested, go check those out. But definitely number two copper is the best place to get it because it is in all sorts of electronics and appliance, regardless of the size of these items. Um, but I do want to address a question that I had from another viewer, and that was where do I sat or where do I categorize it or how do I separate the wire or the copper? And all of this copper you see in this bucket, regardless of how shiny it is, it is all gonna be number two copper. And that's because the scrapyards will look at thickness of wire. In order to be classified as number one or bare bright, the wire has to be thicker than 16 gauge, which is about the thickness of the lead of a pencil. So all of these wires, you can see very, very thin, okay? So definitely not gonna be 16 gauge, okay? That is the first thing. Uh, also, when we look at bare bright, and a uh, bare bright only pertains to copper wire, Okay, so all of your piping, regardless of how shiny it's going to be, is max going to be number one copper, which is still an excellent price at about $4.90 a pound. Okay, but there is no bare bright copper tubing. Okay, all of this wire as well, once you look at thickness, you also have to look at cleanliness. If the wire has soldering on it or paint or glue, it will then downgrade into number two. Um, but again, all of this wire is going to be and items are going to be number two because they all are under 16 gauge. So going to go through some of them right now. Um, talk about some of the items, the good things that I find. Uh, as I said, I do have a bucket here that I just started. This bucket you can see is about 29 pounds of number two copper already. So I just keep throwing it in bags, storing it up. Again, it does not take a lot of time to do it. Um, but one of the best place I still continue to say is in microwaves. I do get a lot of viewers say that they no longer pick up microwaves and vacuum cleaners because they have been, tr uh, the transformers have been replaced with aluminum whitings. And that is true. Some of them are, um, but you definitely want to check. I still say some of them, even the more recent ones, microwaves that are being made, some of them still do have copper inside of them. And these transformers, definitely, if there is copper windings in there, it is definitely a good uh, score. But regardless of that, they still have some great components too. They always have a fan motor here. They will always have a copper core that comes out of a magnetron. And these magnetrons are a great source of not only uh, copper, aluminum, but there is definitely tin. These can be dangerous, so you definitely need to take the necessary precautions. And I do have a full video on dismantling these safely. So again, I will include the link in my description, but definitely a great core here that I have, okay? Um, and the first thing I do wanna do is this fan, uh, very easy to do. There's just a couple screws first that I have to take out. And while I'm mentioning these fans, I do wanna say I did recently find two of them that were aluminum windings, okay? Which Yes, is unfortunate, but regardless of that, there is still copper on them. And that's kind of the reason why I wanted to show one of these fans uh, was for that reason. So here is my little motor, just gonna pull it off. Okay, a little bit of plastic, okay. Uh, first thing I wanna do definitely is the scratch test to see if this is aluminum or copper. So again, you cannot look at it and just assume that it's copper because it's nice and bright and shiny. That is scratched, it is copper. Um, so I am gonna hit that off first. Just gonna put it into my vise. Okay, first thing I always do, make sure it's secure. 
hit it with a hammer. Okay, it will just come out, hopefully, a couple hits. There we go. Okay, so really nice piece of copper there. There's some tin. I'm gonna use some side cutters here. Okay, just pull off this plastic. There's gonna be some brass ends to this for sure. There are some little brass nubs. These brass nubs I will pull off as well. I'll put them into my brass. Brass right now is going for about $3 a pound. Uh, so still, it, that is an excellent item as well. Sometimes those problems are gonna be the gold color, so yellow brass. These ones are um, coated, but again, the same value. You can actually throw them in the same bucket, okay? But look at that nice little spool, okay? Again, this is copper, nice and shiny, but still number two, okay? The rest of this item, however, is if that was not aluminum, uh, or if that was not copper, these little, little pieces here, bolts, that is also copper. And you do wanna pull those off as well, okay? I do wanna have, okay, this one has a couple little knobs in it. Uh, all I'm gonna do to speed this up, I'm just gonna actually cut that off. So use a grinder first, just gonna grind that. that out now hopefully it just comes out there we go okay so just gonna pull that and I doing this just to speed up the process here normally I would take a little bit more time but I wanted to move this this is gonna be tin so this is about six cents a pound but the reason I cut that and sometimes you don't have to sometimes they're just actually uh, bolted on easy to come off but again this I want to take off and very easy to do actually all I'm gonna do is take my side cutter, okay, I'm just gonna cut that first. I'm gonna put my safety glasses on for sure. Uh, but just gonna make a cut. I wanna cut through that copper. Okay, so it's cut through. I wanna cut through both of them because there's two strands there. Okay, so I wanna cut that one too. There it is, it's cut, okay. And all I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it, okay. I'm gonna fold it around. Okay, sometimes it breaks off and that's okay because it's still copper. But if I grab it, which I'm doing here, sometimes it is a little bit stubborn, but it is glued onto that one, okay? But if I feed it through, there it is, okay? So there is a piece, there is a piece. Look at that. So inside of that, you can see that is still copper. So again, going to be some more copper that's on there. So regardless if the spool in here is aluminum, there is still a little bit of copper on that. And while some of you might say, well, it's just a tiny piece, it is, but it all adds up and it's definitely better than uh, going in your pocket than the scrap yards or definitely better than the landfill. So that is one thing, microwaves. Um, you also have those nice copper donuts that come off of your circuit boards, okay? The circuit boards have a nice little copper donut like that. I call them copper donuts or copper, um, you know, magnetic here. There is some ferrite. You will find a lot of these on all types of circuit boards. This is off of a TV, but some really nice copper there too, okay? I just break them with a hammer. They are coated. Um, there is like a magnetic uh, donut inside. This is, I think, ferrite. Um, some people will actually hoard it, save it up, and put it in their own category for ferrite. I just put it into my tin shred, okay? But there is a nice, again, there is a nice spool. I've already broken half of it off, okay? But uh, it does definitely add up, okay? And this is bordering on 16 gauge, but again, the reason this is gonna be number two is because there is a coating on it as well as some soldering. So again, another wire, put that in the bucket, some tin, okay, gonna throw that in there. Uh, I wanted to show this motor. This is actually out of a ceiling fan. Uh, I actually, unfortunately, did pass up ceiling fans when I began scrapping uh, years ago because I didn't realize they had such a great motor inside. Glad that I made that correction. So beautiful copper windings here, easy to do. I could, even though it is time consuming, just cut them uh, using a pair of side cutters. So I'm just gonna show you one of those. Just grab a strand, okay? Uh, some people will use um, your tin snips. Some people will use a grinder like I do and I will just grind one side. But 
Very easy. All I have to do, pull up this one. Just going to grab it. Use leverage. Okay. There it is. Pops up. Okay. Look at that. Nice spool of copper. And again, you do want to make sure you do the scratch test to make sure before you start taking it apart, it is copper. If it reveals a metallic underneath, it's aluminum. So don't bother taking it apart. Just bring it in as a motor as is. Okay. But again, this is copper. Beautiful copper motors from ceiling fans. And every one of these is worth money. So beautiful. Wanted to show as well this. Uh, and I really wanted to show this because this was a surprise to me. I took apart a small water cooler. It had this plastic cap on it. Luckily, I did see a couple copper coils coming out of it. And once I cracked it open, I revealed this beautiful spool of number two copper. I have never actually seen one that has the wax inside of it. Um, the larger water tanks you have will have a bucket on top that have the nice copper wrapped around it. Usually a little bit of soldering on it that's connected, usually a stainless steel bucket. Um, so this one is definitely a newbie for me. But again, once I remove that wax, um, this, regardless of the brightness, tubing is not bare bright. Uh, so this would either have been number one or number two, but because of the soldering connecting, as well as the thick wax coating, definitely number two. So water, cooler, definitely want to make sure you check. As I said, lucky I didn't just assume this was garbage and throw it into my garbage. So never know what you're going to expect. And again, I do have a breakdown of the water tank, water cooler for sure. Other types of motors. This is a motor. Sometimes you'll get vacuum cleaners, have them. This I think came out of a paper shredder. Again, before I start disassembling that, I want to make sure I scratch that coil. You can see the beautiful, nice, shiny copper there. So definitely the copper out of here. Copper bearing motors, an excellent source of copper for sure. Different sizes, different widths. This one actually came out of a fan. This too, once I scratched it, very easy, look at that copper here. And again, I do have videos on copper bearing motors. My TVs, I love my old CRT TVs, as well as computer monitors, the old ones. You can see, I wanted to show this because this is your copper yoke. Uh, I always call them money bells. But the reason I wanted to show it because you can see there is different colors of copper. There is a redder one in there. You can see the outer ones, okay? Again, scratching both of them. Don't assume just because they're different colors, they're not going to be copper or cannot be copper. Some of the red ones are aluminum, but look at that, that's copper. Inside of that, look at that, beautiful copper. Okay, I have already broke one open. Very therapeutic, I just take a hammer and just to quickly show you, very therapeutic, smash a root. Okay, it just breaks it apart, you can see. Okay, this would be obviously the outer coating, has a lot of ferrite on it. Um, this ferrite, again, easy to smash, but I want to make sure I have safety glasses. Okay. Just breaking it apart. Okay, and the nice thing is, is it just folds off like an accordion, if you will. Okay, just unravel it. There is some more ferrite. Okay, you want to make sure you get all of that out of it. The glue is okay on there, for sure. You don't have to worry about the glue. Okay, but again, look at this. Beautiful number two copper. Okay, look at that. Okay, just winds up, throw this into my bucket as well. Okay, I've got the, obviously the two, these two beautiful things. I don't have to touch the tape on there, but sometimes there is underneath a little bit of magnetic strip. I wanna take that off, but the rest of this, nice heavy weight. So your CRT TVs, as well as your old boxed computer monitors, great score there. Dishwashers. Uh, sometimes you will find the motors, if you cannot fit that dishwasher into your car, there is always going to be a side motor, small one. Look at those two spools. I am going to have to work at this because you can see definitely was exposed to water. There's a lot of erosion, rust on this. Usually these will slide right off, but this one I think is stubborn and connected, so I am going to have to hit that. Some brass connectors on that, but again, two beautiful spools. Kind of like your, you know, little motors from your microwaves like that. Do you want to quickly show light fixtures, uh, your tube lights. These are the connectors, obviously, for the light bulb. And some of these are going to be brass. But inside this one, if I hit this with a hammer, this actually has a little bit. These are copper. So it depends on the style of the maker for sure. But look at that. 
That is definitely looks like copper. The scratch test reveals obviously copper as well. Okay, so that's good as well. So definitely want to make sure that it is not gold inside. If it's gold, then it's brass. But these are copper, okay? And there's obviously two of them. So your light fixtures, okay, do have the winding as well that I need to get because that wire is going to give me a 60% appliance wire, okay? The motor, I should have also showed this from a microwave, another great score. These little motors uh, rotate the plate. Just hit that with a hammer, okay? It's gonna, the face plate will pop off or the bottom part. There you can see it's starting to crack. It's gonna put a flat screwdriver underneath, pop it up, so some tin here. These little gears are plastic, okay? But the face plate, there it is. Gonna pull this off. Look at that copper inside. Sometimes there is a ribbon on that, okay, that uh, you can't see it, but this one, just gonna just peel this plastic. There is some more beautiful number two copper. Okay, and I do also want to address another uh, item that I actually just found out yesterday from my dad. Uh, when we talk about um, plug-ins like this, a lot of your electronics and appliances are going to have plug-ins like this or going to have uh, your larger ones like this. These will connect to circuit boards. You have two options with these. Um, in London, Ontario, actually, you can actually take these prongs like this because of the plastic on the side. You can cut them off. You can put them into a bucket with the plastic on and get 16 cents a pound. Or obviously you can take the time and remove the plastic covering and get brass price. So it's entirely up to you. It depends on your time and effort. But the rest of this wire for sure, you're gonna wanna throw into your 60% appliance wire and get your $2.10 a pound for it. Okay, rule with appliance wire, one coating of plastic. Uh, individually strand, so more copper recovery. Um, but again, wanted to address a question that had coated prongs. What do I do with these? So again, you can either keep them uh, in or take them off, get the brass clean, or keep them like this, get 16 cents a pound. So now I'm actually just gonna cut these off, put them into a bucket, and make sure I separate it from the wire. Because the wire, if it had a lot of plastic on it, you can get ground, um, downgraded. But again, there is a nice piece of 60%, and all I have to do now is throw this into my brass bucket. So thanks, Dad, for that. Definitely a good um, you know, piece of knowledge that I just picked up uh, and, again, pass on to my scrapping community. So again, Dad, you continue to amaze me and you know, teach me new stuff every day. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Okay, so here you go. Some beautiful copper. Look at that. Whoo! Okay. And the last really one that I wanted to look at, I'm not gonna open this today, but sometimes you will get lucky. Computer towers can have a heat sink like this that has a beautiful copper ingot. These copper ingots are actually about six ounces of copper. Okay, very easy to do. All I have to do is spread two of these prongs, get the grinder down there, open it, and it will pop out. And I will also show you that in a video that I have. Um, as well as your relay boxes that came off of microwaves as well. Your small transformers like this, as well as your relay boxes. Once I open one of these boxes, there is a nice little spool of copper that comes out of this, as well as several little silver contacts. You can see right here, these are copper, but on that dot, that is a little bit of silver, and I will cut that off and put it into my silver, but some more copper from these prongs. It all adds up for sure. Okay, so little transformers. Again, some of them easy to take apart, and I will show you how to do that. Some of them, however, if I was to show you, obviously different sizes, uh, but some of them do have a little bit of soldering on it like this, but look at the nice copper in there. I do have to hit that soldering with the grinder just to open it. The outer casing is going to be uh, tin, but some number two copper there. As well, other circuit boards have little spools like this, Okay, these are a nice little thing too. Just open that up, break it. Okay, so two spools. And again, all I have to do really is unravel it. Okay, so sometimes it's just, there we go. Nice and therapeutic, but another nice score. So circuit boards for sure always have some nice little copper spools on it. Okay, and again, it all adds up. 
Okay, so just gonna take one of these off. But look how much look how much length there is on this. Okay, and this is only half of one. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Actually, I can't say it. The longer it goes, the more money I get. So <laughs> there we go. I want it to be really, really long. There we go. So that's only one. But again, look at that nice thing. Into the bucket it goes. Okay, another spool that I'll take apart. Okay, as well as sometimes you have the little connectors. This actually also came out of a magnetron. Okay, so it has some nice copper, has a little magnetic piece to it. This obviously has to go into number two because of the glue on it. Okay, but again, another piece of copper come out of my magnetron. Number two, there it goes. In the bucket it goes, okay? Last two things I wanted to show is a dryer. Again, these dryers, you can hear them if I shake it, okay? These are copper, but you do have to open them because as you can see inside, I opened it. I do have a full video on how to do it, but the pellets inside, obviously you are gonna get penalized for that. As well, they have a stainless steel screen or sometimes a screen. If I put a magnet to it, it is magnetic. That is because there is a uh, metallic or steel screen in there. And again, if I bring this in like this, I'm gonna get downgraded for sure. So you do wanna open these, very easy to do. Um, I do have a lot of these, like I said, um, dehumidifiers will have them. Uh, your uh, ice makers can have them, but these are your dryers that come off of them. And again, if you can see different colors, Okay, there is some soldering on that as well. I do also have right here some number two piping that comes all the way off of it that is gonna add up as well. So definitely a good score. And my last thing, as I said, with my magnetron, look at the inner core of that right here. I've already opened one half of it. Um, if I cut it with a grinder like I did, uh, this is obviously one side of it. I do keep tape on it when I am holding it because I do not wanna disturb the beryllium. But I will also make sure once I open this, I will take the ends here, I'll put them into a container. I will label them um, for the scrapyard members just to keep them safe. Uh, a lot of times, however, they will just take them and throw them right into the tin. But again, I do wanna make sure I make it known for them so I don't expose them to any type of hazardous material and they can hopefully handle it safely as well. So magnetron cores like that. Number two that's gonna go on this bucket too. So I do have a lot of work to do here. A number of great items, like I said, building up that weight for sure. This is what I store up just on my downtime. Um, I've got definitely a lot of stuff to do here, but an excellent source of number two copper. As I said, a 28 pound bag already here. This, just feeling this right now, is probably a good three, four pounds already. I have a number of items to take apart, obviously, and regardless of the size of these items, that spool of copper will definitely add up. Uh, as well as the rest of these material, you still have, as I said, your tin. So it's 100% scrappable with a lot of these items. Unfortunately, yes, there is some plastic always with this, but definitely better to divert as much of this away from the landfill as possible. So again, quick video. I hope uh, it was informative. A lot of information coming at you, but again, hopefully that was addressing a couple questions. Get that copper, all number two, easy to store up, get, uh, and again, continue to maximize your profit by diverting this, not only from the landfill uh, to help environmentally, but also your bank account, if you will, uh, and as well, um, you know, um, doing the right thing uh, by separating it properly and maximizing. So again, thank you for the comments and questions. Thank you for the support. support. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.